Welcome to The Viewpoint. I am Mumudu Mooch. Um, in spite of the innumerable, near universal condemnations of former President Jame and his 22-year tenure, um, the party he left behind, the APRC, the Alliance for Patriotic Reorientation and Construction, the party seemed to be standing firmly behind what the party calls the Supreme Leader. On the 16th of January, um, thousands of party faithful took to the streets demanding his return, um, invoking as the basis for this demand an MOU that the president had signed back in 2017 with the AU and, 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 the, e and the, um, the United Nations and, and, and ECOWAS, which essentially negotiated the peaceful departure to Equatorial Guinea 5,000 kilometers away. Today, my guest on the viewpoint is Mr. Duduja. He is the deputy um, spokesperson of the party and the secretary. Welcome to, to the viewpoint, Mr. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Merge. It's an honor, pleasure. I'm very elated to be part of the program, the viewpoint. Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, when Jamie left in 2017, most of the reports were that he had voluntarily gone. So one wonders now for his return, what do you want the government to do? What is the impediment for a voluntary return, just as he had done it when he was living? Um, that's very crucial, looking into issues. The coalition, the coalition government by then made a lot of promises. And it is up to them to live by these promises, by example to practically show the people that definitely it's a new Gambia. Uh, but looking into events, it's like history repeating itself. And the people within government who want to settle scores, or they have something that they definitely vent inside them, which they definitely want to portray, uh, to my amazement. Now, when you talk about new Gambia, you don't dig in the past and wanting to settle scores through that. But promises made when they talk about good governance, this democracy, um, accountability, transparency, good governance, and the list goes on. Practically, it is yet to happen. To the extent, when you talk about Jame, especially him coming back home, it's like some people can't sleep. They have sleepless nights. And I definitely wonder why. To the extent, there are a lot of alleged atrocities and human rights violations that they said he's responsible. As a head of state, whatever goes right or wrong, you know, we'll all assume that it's your responsibility. But without having him back, how can he be held accountable for some of these allegations? I definitely wonder. And why they can't settle with him coming back, which definitely gives some of them silly blood snipes. Um, Mr. You, you, you said there a lot, but l l let's try to unpick what, what you've just said there. You said, New Gambia, therefore let us forget about what happened in the past. But again, how do we create a sense of newness if we do not know what happened in the past? What would be the baseline? What is the newness? Where are we going? The newness implies that there was something there before, then you want to depart from it. But without understanding it from it, uh, what happened in the past, how do I direct chart my future? Uh, not necessarily forget what has happened in the past. When people dig in the past, like you've mentioned, we want to know what transpired, what happened. What do we build from that? That's why I said it's not about settling scores then it will never end. We must draw a line somewhere. Taking into account, you say it's something new, somebody's found one thing, then he must be punishable for it. And it still exists. Despite the slogan of never again, it's still existing, which means another government comes into play, we dig into the past and somebody's find one thing. For how long? We must draw a line. Digging into the past, there's no problem with that. Like I said earlier, most of it is allegations, yet to be proven by a court of law. It's just people giving their side of the story. And there are issues that have been narrated which are questionable as well. But there are people on the other side, whatever it's been mentioned, they say, yeah, that's it. For me, I said, as far as justice is concerned, if somebody is accused of something or being alleged of something, he or she must be listened to for them to say yes or no.
But, but here, let, let's go back before you come here. What do you want the government to do regarding Jamie's return? What precisely do you want them to do? First and foremost, uh, they're not tying themselves around the joint declaration like you mentioned earlier, because I can say a greater part of it they have already violated. Uh, I'll give examples when it comes to his assets, you know, his earnings and some of the properties that are owned by him. They're not giving any regards to it. For them, it is as if... But that was simply a declaration. A declaration when it comes as an international instrument is never legally binding. It's like an MOU. We've already gone through one experience of an MOU. <laughs> but <laughs> they're, they're never legally binding. <laughs> looking, looking at the stakeholders here, you talk about the United Nations, who has a lot of stake in how the affairs of the world is being run, politically, economically, socially. And you talk about the African Union, which is in charge of Africa as a whole. You're talking about ECOWAS, which Gambe is part of all these three bodies. And to the extent whatever was put on paper, you find on the UN, the United Nations website, by the office of their spokesperson. I believe if that was something to be put under the carpet, they shouldn't have put it on their website, whereby in any part of the world you'll be able to access that. And in the first but again, place... It's a convention. It, it's quite normal. It's a convention of the UN. Yes. They, they have all these different categories. You know, you, you have um, declarations, you have communiques, you, you, you have um, um, conventions. You, you have all these different categories. So that was meant to be a declaration. We were, we were in a desperate situation, mm -hmm. so they had to negotiate themselves out of it so that we could do it peacefully, we could transform, transform power peacefully, surely. Yes, what I want to highlight here is not only UN being involved, but talk about ECOWAS, for instance. And you're talking about West Africa, AU Africa as a whole. Such situations might arise again. For instance, elections will always take part in most or all African countries. What happens if similar situations happen in other countries? Are they going to come back again to strike a deal, a joint declaration, a communique? Would people have trust in them? Or maybe Looking into <laughs> what they did in the past. <laughs> well, well, maybe Credibility else. here is well, at stake. Well, maybe something else will happen. This is a hypothetical. <laughs> you know, yes. anybody, anybody can, it's anybody's guess huh? <laughs> what they're going to do in the past. Mm -hmm. However, there's something that, that what they're going to do in the future. However, there's something that they've gone done in the past. There is something specific mm -hmm. that we can talk about. And even when one looks at that, that, that communique, that, that de declaration, they said, yes, there will be no prejudice to his rights. Yet again, there would also be no prejudice, for instance, to international human rights law mm -hmm. and all the laws. Mm -hmm. So you, you must balance out, really, and, and really understand what the, the declaration was really talking about. Yes, like you mentioned earlier, it has ushered in him living peacefully. That's valuable. So people must look into the peaceful aspect of it especially. If it was otherwise, we could have a different Gambia by today. That so in itself... Give credit? That's this entire credit? No. What I'm saying, peace, it's something that people must value. And whatever has yielded or attained that peace definitely should not be put under the carpet because nobody knows what comes out of it. Do you think he valued peace? Sure, I mean, given that with the announcement of the election results, he, he, he agreed and then afterwards um, tried to recant. I mean, do you think he valued peace, which was, which we could have potentially been explosive in this country? For sure, you would have to put that blame on the IEC for announcing two different results. Anybody could have queried that if results are, are announced and the passing at stake accepted. And you bring in, in a different result from a difference of 50,000 coming down to 18,000. Definitely, that would cast doubt in the minds of the people. But there was, they said there was an error. How did the error happen? I keep but asking. Human error, that. human error can happen all the time. We remember, for instance, was it 2011? Wasn't it the, 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 the journalist, um, um, Mr. Malik Jones? I think the first result that was announced was it in Janjambure? And then second time they came, they rectified it. I mean, the idea that they announce one thing and rectify, mm -hmm. I, I think we you know, have here, to for human error. Here, things are at a different perspective. Looking at what was implemented, they said on the spot counting. 
votes were counted on the spot, witnessed by people, record staking. And this is what they took to the IEC headquarters for tabulation. This is why I am asking, I said on this spot counting, there shouldn't be errors. It was counted in everybody's presence mm. and these figures were taken, witnessed and endorsed by people. Now during tabulation, how come did those, uh, who in his right mind would definitely swell those figures and why would they do that? Okay, so what do you attribute that change? Do you sort of think that there were cynical mo uh, motives behind it? I've said it over and over mm -hmm. again in uh, several of my interviews. I said I challenge the IEC. IT is my field and I know how it definitely works. When these errors happen at first, I said, how did it happen? Using a mere calculator, I said, there are possibilities. But they said spreadsheet database management. I said, wait a minute, that's a computerized filing system. It's not like anybody can just tamper with it. And another question I asked was, how many people were tabulating the result? For instance, let's say three people. If I happen to make a mistake, why should the other two make the same mistake? I said, it's not adding up at all. Either the system could have been hacked as numbers are put in, somebody else could be increasing and decreasing. It's all about technology. It could be a possibility. But so talking about on the spot counting, I am saying that the error couldn't happen there. Because people witness when these ballot boxes were open and counted, they took figures and it was verified and endorsed. So you think the IAC tampered with it? They have questions to answer. Why announced two different results? And they said, if errors happen in URR, how did it happen? This but, is the question that is. But you do not have any positive evidence to indicate that the IAC did something wrong merely that you have your suspicions, but no positive evidence at um, all? Positive evidence somehow, yes. Which is? An individual that I know who even wanted to testify, but looking into security issues and for certain guarantees that would come into play, this is something that I cannot disclose on the mail. <laughs> Somebody that I have met personally, he has asked for certain things, if it could be guarantified, he could bring proof of that. Okay, so what we've got is somebody's testimony. Yes. A single person's and testimony. And not only to testify and verbally. Him, and, and you and believe him. Yes. You believe his I testimony. I met him personally. And to bring out proof of that. Yes. Not only to say it verbally, but he has proof. So you believe him personally, um, what he said, even though you haven't heard the other part, the other side, to say whether they said they didn't. Yeah, because uh, I've been shown proof of it. You've been shown proof yes, of it. Yes, I, I have seen evidences of it. Earlier you said that some people were having sleepless nights yes. regarding Jamie. What, what do you mean by that? Es especially the uh, Attorney General and Chief Justice. Anytime he hears about Jamie's audio, his name, uh, you don't expect anything positive from him. Always. Why not? Why, not? Why, why, do you, why did you say that? Why? He has said it on the onset. I listened to his uh, interview what exactly with the BBC journalist. What did he say? He said from 1994, he never liked the former president. He has never had that opportunity to interact or communicate with him. And he never liked him on the onset. So that is clearly publicly manifesting your dislike for an individual. Well, that, 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 that's, 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 a, that's a different point. But right now, what has he done to show that, I mean, he's having sleepless nights? Yes, as per evidences we have gathered, uh, when it comes to his assets and properties, to us, it has been sold illegally, and which he is responsible. And in right. any court of law, it was it was a legally constituted body that gave that recommendation. I mean, the, the Journal Commission really. N now, said what that we what assets and properties were sold? To whom were they sold? How much was it sold for? But that's a different point. The right, the right to do something is one thing. Yes. The modalities of actually doing it, they're quite another. We're talking here that it was a legally constituted body that said that, you know, the general commission gave them lots of rights. That's to why do. I said in the beginning, it's a new Gambia, they claim, talking about accountability, transparency, good governance. Practically, it's not happening. This was meant to be a public auction for the general public to have knowledge of what was being sold how much it's been sold for and for people to buy. To our knowledge, we're even gathering evidence that even foreigners are buying those properties. So you are not against the fact that these properties were taken, but you were against the fact that they were sold. It was sold done secretly. In, but not against the fact that they were taken. No way. That, that it's okay yes. that they if, were taken. If it is done in the open, at least Gambians would have a clue of what transpired. But doing it secretly, is it really the right channel? 
That is the question mark to be asked here. Because we're receiving information right, that some right. of them, they even sold it to one another. Close aides, they so bought it themselves. So they were right in taking this property. So essentially, Jamie stole these properties from us. That's, that's if you he's think they the were one, right. He's the one who would be able to verify that. For instance, if the commission says it belongs to government, Jamie could have proved that it is his personal property. He's the one who could prove that. And even when you go to the courts, it's all about evidence. You claiming something, and if I come out with factual evidence, definitely the court cannot re rule against what I provide. So that's why I said he should be listened to, and he still has a role to play in it, either to say yes or no. This is all about justice. I'm not saying he's right or wrong. This is my belief, be it Jame or whoever. If you allege of something, you should be given the opportunity. So you are sitting yourself. on the fence? Not likely sitting on the fence. I just believe so things neither right nor justice wrong. has to so be served. You are sitting Everybody on the is fence. innocent until proven guilty. This is my take in the whole issue. But not in a sense when somebody is, is alleged and everybody says, yeah, that's it. I'm shelving something for tomorrow. It could happen to anybody tomorrow. We must set the record straight. But in society, we are making judgments about all sorts of things. We have all kinds of institutions that pass judgments on us. They don't necessarily have to be courts. If you're going to tell me that, you know, bringing to me this legalistic maxim that all is um, um, innocent until proven guilty, in fact, perhaps a French jurisprudential man can come and say, no, actually, sometimes you are guilty until proven innocent in some jurisdictions. Yes. So this is much more than that. <laughs> ex ex this exactly. is much more than I am, that. I am still accepting to that. That's why I said you must give people that opportunity, you know, to prove themselves. There's no problem saying they're guilty. But should we draw the curtain from just alleging that they're guilty and we bury the hatchet? I don't feel that is justice. So you have that is my take that is your opinion take, take on your the issue. You're, you're sitting that on the fence here. Looking into so. issues today, <laughs> it is still happening. People are alle alleging against the current president, His Excellency Adam Abaro. Do we take what they say or what they're accusing of that he is responsible? There are, we different, can take it there like are different levels of, of, of allegations. So now, mm. um, earlier on, you, you, you said all these commissions, whatever is going on right now against the, the, the former president, these are mere allegations to, to, to you, an allegation, it is an Some allegation. Some of it, I said, not all. Some of it. Yes. What, what do you think of what's going on at the TRRC? What the, the portraiture that is emerging out of the testimonies quite gruesome, isn't it? Interesting. The, the, the leader of your party, the supreme leader, you call him. Um, since the inception of it, or before the TRRC kickstart, uh, I had a series of interviews with journalists who were telling us that the TRRC will be the killer bullet for APRC. I said, why the APRC? Is it meant for Gambia or for APRC? From that point onwards, I began to be skeptical. Is it really meant for Gambia to dig into what happened? And again, they said from 1994 um, to 2016 or January 2017. Um, what I am bringing into play here, there are historical moments that happen in this country, which I believe it has been skipped. And I did challenge people, even the journalists. Take, for example, 2014, December 30th attack. And I told people that I am betting they're going to skip it. Which, is, uh, which was a historical moment in the country. And it happened within this range, but we don't hear them talk about it or to bring people on board to look into the issue to testify. Is it that certain events or moments are important and others are not? Looking into witnesses again, if it's about Gambia, but, 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 I believe but, but, everybody should be eligible to come and testify. But for them, they said some are not credible witnesses. How do you judge somebody being a credible witness? I'll take the case of uh, former spokesperson of the junta, former Captain Ibujalo. He put it on the social media that he want to come and testify, but the TRRC is saying no to him. Um, Samsudin Sar, whom you know that from 94 or before 94, he was in the system. Uh, to 2016 when he was representing Gambia, the Security Council, UN Security Council. He wants to testify. They're saying no to him. Alongside, there are a few others who but you know, portray the themselves on social but media. But surely the TRRC must run its own affairs. Yes. The TRRC, you've got highly experienced, brilliant people really manning that, that institution right, right now. Mm -hmm. So they will make the judgment 
who they want to invite in, in, in many ways. It is not up to us to ask them to invite us. <laughs> yes, but they made it open that when people want to testify, they can contact them. And they gave contact details. But here is a case, anybody who wants to talk about Jamie and what's happening is always welcome. But, but this, is, this is an investigation into Jame and his government, the error. So it necessarily Exactly. And his that. government, not him alone. But here the spot line is only, you must talk about Jame. Take but he was part of a party. He was exactly. part of a whole um, structure. I quite agree of, to of all that. I quite so? agree to all that. Look at the junglers. They were not only three people. They were more than three, but only three were set free. Because they said what they wanted them to say or what they wanted to hear. Those people are let loose, but there are still others that are under custody. So still not let loose. So do you think that they wanted to hear these really gruesome testimonies? Do you think that people were just there to just gratuitously hear these gruesome testimonies of people being tortured and murdered? You think this is what people want to hear? Not likely. Then why do you say that they were, once these people were told them what they wanted to hear, then they gave them pardon or whatever? Is, is this what you think that the TRRC is all about? What well, I'm talking about, a group of people committed the same crime. Why let some go and others you still keeping them? In fact, I'm sure you, 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 you've heard about this because just interacting with ordinary people, mm -hmm. lots of them thought that Mali Jata, be the Oyas, even though they seemed dreadful on, on, the, on the face of it, as dreadful as, 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 as they were, yet somehow their confession, to my mind, I was quite surprised. It happened quite a, a good number of people. I'm sure the victims wouldn't like it that way. Mm -hmm. But the others, be it Ali Jang or, or, or was it it's somebody else saying, or, I mean, to, to everybody, it appeared as if they were really dissembling. <laughs> it was just quite obvious to everybody else. And they have said that cooperation is really a key to how you're going to be treated. This is the nature of a commission, of a truth commission. This is what I'm saying. When somebody says what you want to hear, like they're cooperating by telling you what transpired, they're free to go. That's it. But if telling others you what transpired. Yes. But if that is important. If That's the key. Yes. I'm talking about a group of people did the same thing. Somebody said, yes, we did it. Somebody said, no, I wasn't part of it. So by saying no, you can't go free. You must say yes, then you go free. This is the, you know, balance I am talking about. And yet again, I feel the victims but have a stake in it. But I feel it's but not up to no government balance. to let them go, but the victims should decide whether they should, be, they should forgive or not, whether they should let them go free or not. But you know very well that justice doesn't work, work like that. When you, when you go to the courts, the courts will determine the it sentences. They different. do not ask. They do not go and ask the victims what sentence, what sentence they sh should be passed. I quite they agree have their to own. that. So, so really, that would be unconventional. I quite <laughs> to agree to that. But you're talking about reconciliation and reparation. In the absence of victims not taking center stage, that would be quite difficult. Because it's not only for the TRRC to make the decision in the absence of the victims. I, personally, I am against that. That's why I even said the likes of Malik Jata should not have been let loose. Has your attitude changed towards Jamme? How? Given, given all that you've been hearing, um, the Jana Commission, the looting, how many, how many millions, now the TRRC, we're beginning to hear all sorts of things. And even before that, the international um, um, news outlets were awash <laughs> with all sorts of reports regarding um, Jamis' misdeeds I I in this country. So the more you hear these things, has this changed your attitude towards Jamie or how you see him? Not actually. Like I said, people can come and testify, be witnesses, and. Uh, give their side of the narration. And uh, it's not balance. We must listen to the other side as well. I tell people I haven't lived the source of this country quite a long time. But it's so things overwhelming. happen in my absence. It is so overwhelming. Witness after witness from cross section of our society. Y yes. Witness after witness. It's, it's essentially a mountain. It's an, it's an Everest, <laughs> if you like. Of, I of, know of people in the system that That's gives me a different side of what those witnesses are telling. That's why I said I wasn't away for too long that things happen in my absence. I have relatives who were in the system and are still in the system. I have people that I don't know, they call me and give me a different side of the story who tell me still I am working in government. They give me certain issues 
to the extent without evidences publicly i can't go out there and say this is what is happening but some of them have visited them they've shown me evidences some have given me evidences so i am seeing something quite different from just what is being narrated so i said things have to be balanced so you i don't Jan just have to president. give one a to what is being said here and ignore the other part because I'm very because really there is no balance in the allegations mm -hmm. there is no balance in the allegations most of it, this is why I've called it an Everest of, 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 of testimony ag against the president. Yes, but rarely, very few people have really come and say Jami was a wonderful person. Jami didn't do this. But instead, people who were close to him were telling us how they were afraid of him. Through them, we, we knew how he perverted the whole public institutions and everything that was going on. Surely, if he had a person of conscience, that should at least prick something in there. This is what I'm saying, that I have had some people who said differently, like the likes of the current uh, GAP party leader, General Bojan. I listened to his interview. He said the Jami he knew, and what he said is different from other witnesses. What they're talking about at the TLRC. That's why I said it depends who do you bring in as a witness. There are other people, you bring them to the TRRC, they will say differently. But, but, but maybe you are losing your sense of balance. Not actually. <laughs> because, Not actually. But because you have, uh, you have this isolated uh, sort of pockets of support, if you like, and then um, you want to equate that. You, you want to use them as a parallel. You want to equate that no. with the mountain of, of, of testimony ranged, you know, put against the former president. I am telling you that I meet people who were in the system, and they give me and show me evidences of what transpired. My own brother was in the service by the name O6 Kamara. His real name was Abu Kamara. He was a commando trained by the Turkish at State House Kanilai and at the former president's late mom, a zombie's mom. It's not like he was just confined to the barracks. He knew what was happening and transpired. Currently, he's not in the country. That's why I said people who were in the system, they've spoke differently and they've said differently. Because they enjoy it differently. No. In any system, by mm. definition, you're going to have the feel. Enjoy. You will have the feel. My this brother, let me tell you a side of his story. Uh, My this brother currently is not in the country because he had a problem with them. They even went to court and he won the case. So it's not like he was having things his way. I'm talking on the media and people are watching. They can attest to that. Currently, he's not in the country oh, oh, based oh, on these problems oh, he oh, had. Absolutely. But, but despite that, he will give you facts that these are actually things that happen. But, but come on, we, we all understand that with, with, with dictatorships, certainly. At one point, you are a favorite. In fact, you are one of the henchmen. Mm -hmm. And at another point, you are a scapegoat. <laughs> this, is how, this is how dictatorships do it. And this was exactly what, what he suffered. Like most people suffered it here in this country. At one point, you seemed like you were a favorite. And the next imprisonment as that one happens, person posted. That happens in every oh, country oh, you oh, go oh, to, oh, oh, to this world. Go to any country, but, but, but engage the people. Whoever is the leader, they'll give you the shortcomings, human rights violations, and the like. As human beings, there's no perfect system in the whole world. So it's not only corner to the Gambia. Yes, atrocities happen, human rights violations, and the like. And I said it's still happening. You go to other countries, it's also happening. We'll never have that perfect system. Even though we yearn and we struggle for it, but it will never happen. As human beings, there are people who will always go against the odds. No matter what you want to build, they will be against it. But, but, but um, I'm not sure here wh what you are saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would like to think that by now any rational being would know that actually something happened. Of course. Are you denying that Jami didn't know about it? Or... It, but these, these atrocities didn't happen. What exactly are you not sure about? Sh certainly there happened. People who were close to him, the Edward Singatis, he even acknowledged that these things happened, mm -hmm. only that perhaps he wasn't around, he wasn't there. <laughs> 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 even he accepted that. I mean, surely certain things happened. Are you saying that the president, the former president, wasn't aware of it? Not certain things happened. Many things happened. 
Thank you very much. And so there was the issues, president aware or not? Some Iraqi. of it he was aware. There are things that happened he wasn't aware. And these I have examples, numerous examples about it. So he was the one as giving the orders to kill the jungles? No, and the, no. And the as an How individual. Do you know? How do you know? As an in, that's why I'm telling you, I still talk to people who are still in the system and people who attest to certain things that happened which he was not aware of. So you want us to rely on the hearsay, your hearsay? No. That is hardly something That's solid. why I said That's I can't only solid. listen to one side of the story and believe everything that they say. There's another side to the story. It is also very important to listen to that side. And if I tell you I have an audio whereby a guy from the TRRC has to call upon a lady and say, come and come to the TRRC and testify about Jame and we'll give you money. And I have this audio in my phone, so not live on the program. After the program, I can play it for you. You listen to it, how the conversation. So works. that anecdote in your, in your mind, that anecdote sort of vitiates the whole process? That's why I said not <laughs> all. Some of it, you'll put a question mark to it. You can just put all in that basket and said everything is verifiable. That's why I said these are people testifying being witnesses to events that has happened. But in a court of law, it's something different. Even these same people testifying, somebody would say this, another common process aside. Now, who do I believe? The same incident, somebody said this, it's white, another comes and says it's black. And the lead counsel himself telling them that you're lying. So do I have to believe, believe everything that they are saying? At times I ask, who do I believe? Okay, what aspects so far have have you believed? Uh, I can't make a list of it. Some of it being mention explained. One. Can you mention one, for instance? Anyone? The April 10, 11. I was a youth by then, and I was in the midst of what happened. So some of those narrations, I was an eyewitness. I cannot just brush that aside. And there were other narrations that were, that were mentioned, which were absolutely not true. Because I was an eyewitness. Take, for instance, the lady... Um, who talked about that the paramilitary going to the schools and stripping street students off naked. That was never true. It was the students being terrified that the paramilitary would identify them being students wearing uniform. They were going into compounds and asking them for civilian clothes, taking their uniform off and wearing clothes so that they wouldn't be recognized but as But the children. killings happened? Yes, it did. That's why I told on you I armed, was an On armed island. children. Exactly. W w w were killed. Exactly. How, how old were I you was then? In how, the midst old, of how old were you then? By then I finished grade 12. By then I was playing football. What did you think? Even the information we got when we were on the field, on our training session, we had the information that by Monday, uh, students should not go to school. There's going to be a demonstration. What did you think about the APRC when that happened? Look at this instance. Anytime the president travels out of the country, something happens. Doesn't that look weird? In many instances, whenever he travels, something must arise. What, what does that mean? It means people were plotting in his absence. Or oh, one can look at it the other way around. Maybe whenever he wants to do certain things, he decides to travel. No, it just, it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of you know, interpretation. It depends on the angle you decide to I'll stand. give you the reasons for traveling. It was never on holidays or private visits. These were happenings like meetings, etc., in the UN, etc., uh, um, visiting other heads of state. That was not just pre-arranged or merely one can just buy a ticket and go to other but, but there's something else you're and doing here. And above all, when that <laughs> happens, he comes back straight. But Mr. Jack, yeah, it seems mm. that you, there's something you, you, you're trying to you're juggling here with, with me. Mm -hmm. Earlier on, you said with most of these allegations, it's, it's neither right nor wrong. You did not know you were sitting on the fence. Mm -hmm. But once we get into details, you tend to be defending President Jame no. in every situation. No. It seems as if you had taken a side. <laughs> but I just what doesn't suit you, no you way. pretend to sit on the fence. I don't defend people based on for the sake of defending me. Like I said earlier, I am building something, be Jame or anybody else tomorrow. People should be given these privileges to defend themselves, right or wrong. This is my belief. You cannot just allege on somebody. You've never uttered a word and you want to crucify them for that. I don't believe that is justice and I don't believe it is human right. As bad as an individual might be, their rights too should be respected. This is my belief. Absolutely. Yes, not like I am defending him. I don't know. That's why I said many things happen. 
If I was defending him, I would say it never happened. But I said many things happened because I was but, in but the I, country. But I think you, 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 you'll be too embarrassed to say that, to say that it never happened. I mean, no <laughs> way. what we've heard so far is just I would be naive. To, to, to and as a Gambian, yeah. like I said, <laughs> I never traveled, left this country <laughs> for things to happen in my absence. I was around when things were happening. But what I'm saying here, it's everything that happened, he ordered it. Then I would say, let the current president take the same responsibility. A lot of things has happened in the country. So here, essentially, you're saying that we need to hear from Jamme. Exactly. Be so Jamme, whoever has been alleged of any crime in the whole world I'm talking about, we must listen to the individual. So That's what, you, my so, so what, what you, you're calling for, that was why the, the, um, the attorney general said what he said. That we should Jaime come back here? He'll be arrested. Is he going to go to the TRRC? There's a, there's, a, there's a case to answer. Or we'll go to go and have to face the courts. That is my wish and is what I am advocating for. I said I would love for Jaime to go to the TRRC. There are a lot of things that happen. You know, perhaps Gambians have never known about it. He will talk about it. And there are people in this country who think they're saints. They're good people. Jamme will talk about what transpired between them. Have a lot will be revealed. As a party, have you asked him to come and testify at the TRRC? No, we haven't. Why not? Because we if don't you have love the prerogative. If you love it to is have not him. our mandate. And the TRRC, we're not stakeholders in it. Like they did with other people who are overseas. It is a national process. Sana came. Edward came and others likewise, even those in the diaspora. The same channels could be met through him. How do you know whether they have not been exploring these things? No. They've been exploring channels. How do you know? Because have we, we ever spoken to the former president regarding the, whether we make this possible appearance? In we the make our inquiries. He's not there alone. He's there with people that are working for him and people around him. And we communicate with them constantly. There was a journalist who told me that the DRC have written to him, which we cannot verify. And we told them, writing to him, it's not a problem. But why didn't they copy the party? He said, you're right. Because the base is here. The support base is here. Writing to him, it's OK. But copy to us, we'll have proof that it is central. Well, for the purposes of the TRRC, really, the person they want here is Yaya Jami, the former president, not necessarily the Alliance for Patriotic Reorientation and Construction. The, it's not necessarily the same. One might wonder why should they um, inform you? No. Why we, indeed? We're saying, for evidence sake, like everything to you, you said no, you did not receive anything. Where's the proof of that? But copying to somebody else will provide evidence that you've actually written. They have their own channels of doing stuff like that. They are not bound. To, 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 to give it to you, to tell you. There's nothing, there is no regulation, no law, there's absolutely nothing that stipulates that they should inform you. But the mm -hmm. people they're supposed to inform, there's no doubt that they've been informing them. So, really, you're trespassing here. No, no, no. <laughs> I am not trespassing. I am not trespassing. What, what I said they? is, a journalist did mention that, and he asked whether we're aware. We said no. We can't be aware if we're not notified. Having been were notified, we said yes, we were aware that it happened. So, you, but you would, you, you've said personally mm -hmm. that you would want him to come and face the TRRC. Exactly. But as a party, what is the party view? You are the secretary of the party and the deputy spokesperson. Yes, we, what is the party view? We never that? discussed about that issue and uh, came to any conclusions about that. So I cannot say this is the party stand. But you've discussed it. It has never been an agenda. You have discussed it? No, it has never been an agenda. You have never discussed it at all? No. But surely, isn't that some omission? I mean, un unbelievable. This is a huge <laughs> institution there. We're going through no. a very significant process. No. And, and, and you can call important it to an, an omission. Him being the supreme leader of the party, this is why we feel that we should be notified. Had it been notification came, then it would be an agenda. We'll sit over it and discuss about but, it. But, this may but it's this like it is not our business, according to them. So we're also minding our business. Well, that is merely formal. The mm -hmm. idea of being notified, that's merely formal. Have the substantive thing is that you, as a party, 
and given the egregious nature of what he is alleged to have done, surely you must have a position on these things to show that you are more of a national p party instead of merely belonging to one person. Now, as far as these issues are concerned, uh, several times we had press conference and we talk about it, journalists ask questions and we clarify. The interim party leader does that. In certain interviews when people take me on, I answer questions. But as far as this issue is concerned, have they really written to him? That's the question here. Well, we, uh, we do understand that all those people who have had adverse mentions, mm -hmm. they have been giving notices of advance mention where your address, they can ascertain your address. Mm -hmm. And one would like to think that they have used diplomatic channels mm -hmm. to, to get this notice to, 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 to President Jame. That, 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 that's a different point. But the interesting thing is with you, the party doesn't have a view on this, but you personally, you would like to see him come and face the exactly. TRRC. Exactly. That is yeah. my take. Because a lot been said, it's for him to say yes or no. And there are things perhaps they don't even know. He will talk about it. This is my point. Being a leader of a country for 22 years, that's not 22 months. A lot has happened. Even some of which secretly that he feels Gambians need to know, he will definitely let it out. When did you join the APRC? Since when I was going to school. On the onset, when the coup d'etat came on, it found me at grade 8. Why? Why, why? why did you join the APRC then? Um, when they came into being from the junta, when they said they were soldiers with a different, and um, certain transformations they did in this country definitely moved thousands of Gambians. Like what? What transformations? what transformations? Um, when it comes about? to education per se, since we were young, uh, when I was going to primary school, I used to carry my own decks and chair to school, to and fro. Which, when they came, they had a different perspective of building schools and putting chairs in those classrooms. People were torn and dusted with carrying chairs to and fro. Where are those schools? Because now look at our society now as it is. President Barr has been here only three years. Mm -hmm. All the difficulties we are going through, and mm -hmm. um, the sort of dilapidated, if you like, um, public services. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at every sector, everybody is complaining in a sense that is really his legacy. Exactly. You cannot blame the, pre the, the, the government that only came into power three years ago. I mean, where is it, sir? You know, if a government complains or claims that they inherit efficiency, then definitely it shows they are not capable of pushing this country forward. Gambia is a tiny country. With all the support and aid they got from the international organizations, they shouldn't have given complaints. I'll give you an example. When things started, when Jammeh just left, by then, Honorable Maifati said he took $11 million. Everybody was talking about it. I said, okay, I quite agree he took $11 million. I said, Biden, the EU gave us 75 million euros. I said, 75 is more than 11. Euro equivalent to the dollar. The euro is greater than the dollar. So the coffers cannot be empty. $11 million gone, 75 million euros came. How can the coffers be empty? You know, Mr. Ja, Mr. Ja the main charge really against the APRC mm -hmm. is that Instead of holding the leader to account, you just allowed him to run rampage. It turned out to be a one-person party, and really you could have reined him in, but you are really complicitous in whatever happened here. The party mechanism within, this is really quite, quite, quite shocking. You, you allowed him to do whatever he did. You no, yourself no, accept no, that no, there were no. many dreadful things that he did. You accept that he did some. Not actually. Let me clarify here. So he didn't, here. Do, he didn't do some? Yes, let me clarify here. APRC has a government. There's a distinction between APRC and a party, and APRC has a government. Not everybody who was in that government was part of the political party. People were given positions to man. And as such, they can associate with the party. Responsibilities were given to people, ministers, who were not part of the political party, but they have responsibilities to fulfill. But once he, you know, he turned from AFPRC to APRC and you won, you went into government, it was the APRC in government. 
Yes, this is what I'm telling you. <laughs> the APRC Which has a difference with the party. Today, not everybody in government is Obviously. part of the NPP, the National People's Party. Not everybody in, in government is part of Barrow's party. We have to accept that. But that's obviously so. This Still, is what I'm saying. But not, it APRC it. out of government. Where are those who worked in the government? Do you see them in the party today? The, the, the point is, you know, the fact that there are those outside of government doesn't negate the fact that it was an APRC this party This is what government. I'm saying. How we <laughs> operated as a political party was quite different from how government was functioning. So if you said one man controlling the party. I am telling you that people came, they were giving responsibilities who never knew what APRC as a party was. But the APRC, what were the aims and objectives? Was he ever, did you ever censure the APRC party? Have you ever censured um, President Jami for, 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 for a misdeed? <laughs> yes, there were a certain when? things that never went right. When? Which, you know, which were? Several for occasions. Name like one. Let's name like one. For, Let's instance, one. for instance, people been giving positions. People come out with ideas and say, this is what has to be done. And at the party level, we tell him, no, it doesn't have to be this way. It has to be that way. But he does not only have one lens looking at the party. He said he has Gambia to rule, being the head of state of the whole country. Not only what the party wants, he's going to succumb to that. He does things differently. And as a party, we don't have the powers to challenge that or to defy him or say no to that. So this was said it was a one person because policy had to be determined by the party, not having the individual leader imposing his own views on you. It seems that this is really what you're confessing, confessing to, that essentially he was running the whole show. No, and I you did couldn't not say do, you couldn't do anything about it. We did what we could, but we don't have the powers to challenge. And but, to override so, that. But you had no effect. In, we have in, our limits. In, in essence, then you had no effect. In any government, you have your limits. We are talking about it's a party It's not like here. whatever you push, that here. is what you're going to no, get. But here we are talking about the party. What did you do? Fine, you may not have um, um, had any effect, but do we know any tangible steps that you had taken to, to curb at least some of the excesses that he was doing when he was common knowledge what he was doing? As, as a party, people are people really. The, the main criticism is that you, you allowed him to, to, to get away no, with it. No. You, you betrayed <laughs> the, the whole ethics of Un a political party. You unless, allow one person to dominate it. Unless you give me examples of what you're trying to state here, then I'll be known, able to know exactly what. Because things are vague. People are saying anything and everything. At least give me examples, and I will tell you that the party did this you, or the party did that. But afterwards, you were the majority party in, 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 in the National Assembly. All the laws, particularly the media, we have, we have an interest in that. Mm -hmm. All the draconian laws within, in, in, in our statute, statute books were put by your party. Yes, <laughs> which I quite agree. <laughs> most of the, the, the dreadful laws we... <laughs> and they're still there. On the, put by your party. And they are still there, <laughs> which means they're also embracing it. No, what we are going to a constitutional review commission. Mm -hmm. You know that there are all sorts of processes now ongoing. So, so naturally, some things would be slower to change. Than some others. of those laws through parliament changes can be made. Laws have been enacted at parliament. What suited them? They made changes to age limits and the like. Why didn't they also make changes to those draconian laws well, you know, they're that talking about? You know, that question was put to the Attorney General at one time. He said mm -hmm. that they wanted to have a, a holistic, comprehensive tr change. But in, what favored of touching them? They, they, or, or touching, or, or touching what that. favored them? They never wasted time on that. You see what politics that does. That should also have to be part of the holistic but, but, but approach. You, you see what, what, what politicians do. Mm -hmm. Jame did exactly the same. What favored him, that was what he did. What why? he didn't do, all of this you are this accusing. This is why practically <laughs> I'm questioning the new Gambia. This is what you I do. said, what happened yesterday? <laughs> it's still happening. To me, I've been saying this slogan over and over no, but, but, again. But that's an overkill. What was wrong yesterday cannot be right today. I keep repeating this. That's it, but you have to also concede that... Gambia that was a, that was is bigger than APRC. I'm a nationalist. I see my country first before a political party. Before APRC, Gambia existed. After APRC, Gambia still exists. So I am somebody who look at the country as a whole. When you make promises, practically live up to it, give people the change they yearn for. When you say something is not good, why still keep it there? We're talking about the draft constitution. Will it pass the litmus test? With some of the laws they're also still putting in, for me, it is not explanatory. Because people's consent were sought. What do we want to be in the Constitution? 
they went around consulting people and opinions giving is not reflecting in the draft. And yet still how, do you, how do you know? I attend several and numerous workshops by which we looked at the draft constitution and we flagged many sections and we told them these were things we want to change, but it's still reflecting. Mr. Ja, you know very well that I mean the country might be small, but again the number of consultations they had, they even had to go uh, abroad. I mean, I'll have to say that what you attempted in many ways can be described as simply a drop in the ocean because you miss far more not than likely. you could possibly attend, given I mean, what, 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 what they did. I and, am, and I am also part of the Interparty Committee, the IPC. From here, I'm going to attend that meeting, F of which all political parties have an MOU and we work together. Look, taking into all political parties together, but what's the voting ratio? Those that are not within the political but, but party. But you here, you're that. giving us just one your own point of view on things. There are many <laughs> views out there. So why should they follow your we, views? We brought this attention. One of the workshops that was organized by IRI, International Republican Institute, by which there was a representative from the CRC. What the lady said that not only groups, their views are captured, but there are individuals too was giving opinions and it is also captured. And the response from most of the political parties were, then go to these individuals, let them vote yes. If what majority is telling you it's not captured, you don't expect them to accept. Okay, let, let's, 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 let, let's put it this way. Perhaps mm. most of these things are simply procedural and, 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 and so the, the, there's, there's a new sort of worry, anxiety as it were. I wonder what you feel about it or your, or your party. Mm -hmm. But ideally, when would you want us to have the referendum for the new constitution to kick in. I've heard, even heard political commentators that perhaps Jawar, um, 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 Barrow might decide to drag his feet maybe till after 2021. <laughs> when, when, when would you want us to, to, to have this, this referendum so that the new constitution can kick in? Um, Earlier than 2021, the elections, or afterwards? Any Earlier position? than 2021, but that will again depend with would the Would the party IEC. push for that? Would the pa party push for that, your party? We can push, but the IEC have a stake in it because they're the ones who are going to organize the referendum. How prepared are they? Financially, practically, resource-wise, these are big questions. And in most workshops we have, IEC are always on board and they're answering some of these questions which definitely we're not getting positive response. So it's not only that it might drag beyond 2021, but how prepared is the IEC? That's the question here. So, so there are practical matters. Yes, here to, we're talking to, to about Let's say but but would it bother you before or after? Your preference is before, but if it is after, it doesn't bother you. It doesn't at all. What is important here is some of the sections that political parties have flagged. I want the CRC to look into it thoroughly and to make changes. It doesn't tell well if political parties are against this draft constitution and they have to come out and vote no then which means all the effort and resources put into it, definitely it's going to be a waste. I'll give you one example it's, 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 that it's, they put it's, it's, in the draft constitution. These things are never a waste. I mean, no. <laughs> look at the issue here. They said it's embedded, it's put in the new draft that all political parties, their financial transactions must be submitted to the IEC. Failure of which to do so, the party will be deregistered. Government doesn't subsidize political parties, neither is the IEC. Why do you want to force them to do that? Well, we need to have... Um, That's not democracy to me. Well, you need to have a regulatory body, and regulatory bodies exactly. tend to have certain conditions. Exactly, like that. but you can't force them when you don't give them a dollar. But, but let's move on to, 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 to wider issues. Now, yes. um, we're, we're nearly, the time is nearly up. So now with your party, mm -hmm. President Jamie gone. So your fortunes, your, 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 your backsliding, um, you've got only five members in the National Assembly. Yes. Um, that was, that said, where's the party going? And on, on all five is just within one region, mm -hmm. the full new region. Mm -hmm. So there is no widespread appeal. Um, it was a one person party. So you were on your way out. It's a gradual, Death by a thousand cuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people believed. And uh, the coalition government played a key role in that, through freezing our accounts, you know, seizing our vehicles. They wanted to see the party die. Uh, but we have people that are very resilient, saying that the party gave them everything. They cannot just sit by and watch the party to die like that. 
you know, they have to tie up the shoes, yes, you know, dress up properly and said, we will move this party forward. To the extent during that era, when we call people to take up positions, they were saying, please do excuse me, they were running away. But looking into 2016 up to date, APRC is the biggest political party in this country. Historically, we have pulled the biggest crowd in this country. Videos and pictures don't lie. This is what is worrying. This most was people. because this was because he had the incumbent President Jami was in power, mm -hmm. and President Jami had stifled every other opposition, <laughs> and then he was misused. Now we know how much money he had and how he had the money, and then he would go round and then buy votes. Unfortunately, common folks sometimes they, they tend to fall for things like this. No. Is, we see this in all <laughs> democracies around the world. Yeah, so there are perfectly um, um, reasons, you know, <laughs> identifiable reasons. Why, why that was the case. People expect this. But you see, when he left, remember, 20, what happened in 2011? In 2011, mm. he mm. won, what, 72% of the votes. Yes. And the APRC had, what, 43 of the 48 elected in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the assembly. Yes. Now, what happened, the drastic turnaround by 2016, what, 39%? From 72, mm -hmm. <laughs> drastically gone down. It from was a coalition. From Not from everybody <laughs> on their own. It was a coalition. <laughs> Seven political parties plus independent candidates. Now, that's not happening now. That's why you can still see the force behind APRC. We're not the, 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 Earlier, they were not. They were coalitions before. It's just that they couldn't yes, do anything before, but this but time. That they was did. just two, two, three parties coming together. So you cannot blame coalitions. And they were not <laughs> the biggest opposition by then. They were not the biggest. Looking so now, into statistics of elections. So now, in, in, in the future, you're going to have another march? Wouldn't you relent until the president no, returns? So for now, now, we have a lot of work to do towards elections. But there'll be no protests no, that anymore depends. demanding for the, it for the depends. president. Like no. we've written reminder letters to these stakeholders or institutions. We're waiting to see what their response will be. And based on that, we'll sit over it and we'll come up with another decision. And, and I'll ask exactly when, when I listen to Usman Rambo Jata, when I listen to his, his interview yes. on, on, on the BBC, mm -hmm. when he was saying that, especially regarding this arrest <laughs> that, that the Attorney General had um, threatened, if one can put it that way. <laughs> he said, no, no way. There will be bloodshed. Uh, that was worrying. What do you make of that uh, remark? Yeah, that was his um, personal statement, I would say. But for the APRC, we don't believe Certainly that. do not no, endorse no, no, that. No, because it was no, quite chilling. It was a chilling peaceful. statement to say. Yeah, despite all the happenings word. from 2016 up to date, people never see us react violently. And a lot of things has happened to us as a party. But we've been patient, law-abiding, and peaceful above all. Even when we're attacked, we don't retaliate. Because it's our belief that the little we built in this country will not go out and destroy it again. But you would also accept that a lot of people in this country, they demand justice from Jammeh. Yes, and we respect that. That's why when they said Jammeh to justice, I said, and let him come. We don't have any problems. It is their belief, their right, they're entitled to it, and we fully respect that. We don't have problems with but that. But as a party, you cannot disown him, given this mountain of testimony against him. You turn him we, into a supreme, cannot, supreme leader. You cannot disown somebody who is the founder of the party. And how, as bad as people may paint him, he has done a lot of good in this country. So Why do we have to disown him? But Go to other countries. People have committed worse than him, and they don't disown them. Take Jerry still, Rollins, for example. It, it, it doesn't make this right. We, we do not know. We cannot what, compare. We what, cannot compare how what who did Jerry the worst. Rollins did. We you don't comp compare to that what happened in this country. But we cannot compare who did the worst. All we are saying is this here in our country, the, 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 the experience, the recent experience, mm -hmm. and it is really, to, to some people, it's really quite shocking that the party is still supporting a man with such um, um, mountain of testimony against him. And Alec, <laughs> Alec still. We'll say Alec. <laughs> but why is it that the positive side, it's never talked about? Which is, look what's at the it. positive side? Can we transform this country from zero to something? He brought free education. Why is it that the coalition government take that off? Many kids were privileged to go to school based on that free education. In 1992, 30% mm -hmm. of our population were living below the poverty line. 92. By 2003, 58. Mm -hmm. by, by, by 2006, it had gone on to 74. Mm -hmm. There is no evidence, be the World Bank reports, IMF reports. There are so many reports. There is no way that Jamie pushed anything. Today, look at our country. Gambia been looked at. Go to other countries and look at the statistics. 
These are issues that affect the whole world, not only Gambia. I'm, I'm sorry, wow. we've, come, we've come to the end, we've come <laughs> to the end of, 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 of the, the <laughs> big point today. Thank you very much, it's Mr. 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 Duraja, for joining us today. Bunch. And of course, thank you, um, viewers, for joining us on Viewpoint. Until the next time, I'm Mamadou Bush. Goodbye. <laughs>